Sue Stephen and I am the Director of Clinical Services and the Nursing Specialist for Reflux UK. Reflux UK is a company that's dedicated to diagnosing and treating patients with reflux. Once you have been to see one of our consultants, you will have had some physiology tests and you will have gone through the MDT, the Multidisciplinary Team Process, to diagnose and recommend what anti-reflux surgery you have. My job is to call you post-operatively and answer any questions and to reassure you following your surgery. Hello, my name is Catherine Smith and I'm Mr Boyle's Private Medical Secretary. I'm just going to run through with Sue some of the most frequent questions that we get for post-operative procedures um, from patients so that it might give you a bit of clarity on um, what's to expect. How should patients prepare themselves physically and mentally before undergoing any of these procedures, as in links, reflux stop and fundification? So all the patients, I think having a very positive mindset is vital to getting the best outcome. You'll have discussed all your symptoms, what to expect and what the surgery is going to entail with your consultant prior to coming going forward for this surgery. So I think ultimately going into that surgery, having a positive mental attitude is going to help you enormously to get the best outcome and also following all the post-operative instructions that you will be given, not only with a leaflet but also with your consultation with your consultant. When would I be able to get back to work after surgery? So generally because all the surgery is done laparoscopically and that's keyhole surgery, it's not like having an old-fashioned open surgery where you sort of lots of big incisions. So there's small, tiny little incisions are made, um, so there's minimal invasiveness with those. And you can, should be able to get back to work. Some people go back to work after a week, some people two weeks. But we do sign people off for two weeks if that's what they want. It really depends on what type of work you do. So if you're doing a manual job and you do lots of heavy work, then we would advise you to have a lot longer off. But it's just going to be down to individual choice as to how you feel postoperatively following your anaesthetic. Perfect. And would that be the same with driving? So with driving, again, there are no hard and fast rules. It's again, it's down to when you can do an emergency stop and what your insurance company will say and advise you to do. And we always say it's best to ask them what they want you to do. So as long as you can do an emergency stop quite safely, then you should be able to get back to driving as soon as possible. Perfect. And with um, the scars that you mentioned, the incisions, um, when will I be able to shower and bath? So after surgery, your wounds will be dressed with a sort of semi-waterproof dressing. So I have a couple of those here. Unfortunately, this is quite a large one. Um, and they can come in different sizes and makes. But generally speaking, it's a sort of waterproof membrane on the outside with a little pad on the middle, and that will absorb things. As I say, for most laparoscopic surgery, it'll be about that size. For hernia surgeries or other things, it can be slightly bigger. Underneath that, you'll probably have a paper steri strip, which I'm just gonna show you like this. So it comes like that, and you, it's very, very adhesive on the back, and that holds your wounds together. And again, that just gives a bit more structure and support to the wound. Some people under that might have glue for some types of surgery. Some people will just have little sutures. Um, and it just depends on your surgeon's preference. But most, most wounds will be covered with a waterproof dressing and something else. So you can then bath and shower pretty much after a few days. But just don't want to get it really, really soaked. And um, will I be able to start exercising post-operatively? So with exercise, it really depends on your fitness levels before surgery. So if you're very fit, you probably get back to things much quicker. Now, um, we would not advise any heavy lifting for at least six weeks. So although it's keyhole surgery, we don't want you to be straining things. So you can get back to gentle exercise, walking and that sort of thing pretty quickly. And again, we'll be guided by how you actually feel yourself. So as I say, it's very difficult to give a hard and fast rule. It's just on what you feel like post-surgery. But don't do any heavy lifting for at least six weeks. And what is the longevity of having a reflux stop, links or um, fundification? So fundification has been around for a long, long time um, and there's lots of data on how long these things last and that will have been discussed with your consultant. Um, 
The Lynx have been around for slightly shorter period of time. We started doing them in 2012 and the re reflux stop's only been around for about just over 18 months that we've been doing it. So of course the data on that is limited, but the data on the Lynx is pretty good. So in theory, things should last a long time, but we just don't know in practice how long something like a reflux stop will last. It could be that your hiatus hernia might for some reason need redoing, because that does occasionally happen, but again, that sort of information will be given by your consultant. But generally speaking, we follow patients up for at least between five and 10 years. You'll have to do another health-related questionnaire following your surgery that you'll have completed before your surgery. And that's so that we can keep um, data and collect data and make sure that what we are actually advocating and recommending for people is safe and effective. So you'll be followed up by Reflux UK for probably up to 10 years. Perfect. And um, for whatever reason, could the procedure be undone? So yes, people have had to have um, very occasionally linkses removed. We don't know about reflux stop because we've only just started doing it. And um, fund applications sometimes again have to be redone. So they can all be redone. They're slightly more complex surgery. Obviously you have to go back in and there's you know, scar tissue and those sorts of things around. But that's hopefully not going to not happen. Needed. Not needed, but you never know. So we don't say that they are permanent and that they're going to last forever because you can't guarantee something like that. But generally speaking, it should last you for quite a long time and hopefully give you good relief for your reflux symptoms. Perfect. Can I have an MRI once I've had the Lynx implantation? So the new Lynxes that we put in, um, the new devices, are safe to up to 1.5 Teslas. So original ones were only safe up to 0 0.7. So if you've had a previous surgery, you just need to make sure that you check what your card is. Everybody's given an individual card, which will tell you on that how many Teslas it, your device is safe into. What we would advise is if you are going to have an MRI that you contact the MRI department, tell them that you've got a Lynx device and make sure that they are happy and just show them your card. If you need any further information, you just contact the office and we can send you out any information that you require. Obviously, if you go ahead and have a Lynx device put in and you need an MRI and you go and have it and you have any pain whatsoever whilst you're having that, you need to say stop and then they will have to try and sort something else out for you because it's not safe to continue. Perfect, and will I set off any security alarms when I'm in the airport? No, you shouldn't set off any alarms whatsoever. That should be absolutely fine to go through. But again, if you're concerned, you can take your Lynx card that you'll be given and sent post-surgery. Are there any dietary requirements or restrictions um, that I'll need to do post-operatively? So with the Lynx device, yes there are, and you have to really follow these to get the best outcomes following your surgery. So you'll have your surgery, you'll be in recovery, you'll go back to the ward, you'll, once you've recovered from the anaesthetic, you will then be given something to eat that you need to eat before you leave the hospital. This is to demonstrate to yourself and to the consultant who's carried out your surgery that the repair that they have done on your hiatus hernia and that the Lynx device that they have put in is not too tight. So you might be given a plate of sandwiches or you might be given a jacket potato or something similar. In the first week following your Lynx, we call that the sort of honeymoon period. And as I say, this isn't, not everybody has these honeymoon periods and everybody is slightly different. But in that first week, hopefully you'll be able to eat and drink normally and it is really important that you do do that so that might be three small meals every day or it might be that you want to eat smaller meals and have some little snacks in between after about a week most people get some sort of inflammatory response to the device that's been put in and a sort of capsule forms around the device the most important thing is to keep eating normally because this will act as physio on this device on this capsule and keep it supple because we need that links to be able to open and close properly and effectively. If you don't eat normally and you try and eat liquid foods or soft foods, that capsule can get tighter and tighter and then you can end up with dysphagia or swallowing difficulties. So it is vitally, vitally important that you keep eating normally. Very occasionally, people get something stuck and it's quite unpleasant and it's not particularly nice. You can try having a bit of fluid if you want to and just see if that moves. 
But if you really can't move that little bit of food that's lodged, then we advocate taking a couple of big gulps of a fizzy drink, maybe like Coke or something, and although it'd be unpleasant, it will dislodge that bit of food and bring it up. But if you have any difficulties whatsoever with eating or swallowing, you must let us know as soon as possible. But hopefully, if you follow this advice, you will get a very good result from having your lynx surgery. What side effects may I experience after the lynx? So some people get referred shoulder tip pain following surgery and that's because you use CO2, carbon dioxide, to inflate somebody's abdomen so that you can get a good view of the surgery site and that gets absorbed into your tissues and it can give this referred shoulder tip pain. You will be given um, pain medication to take home with you, so your anaesthetist will discuss any allergies you might have and they'll discuss what sort of pain relief will be best for you and that will be prescribed before you leave the hospital. Hopefully, because it's keyhole surgery, after a few days you'll be able to stop your pain medication and get back to normal. But those are the most, on pain relief, hopefully that should cover everything. But as I say, the, the biggest thing, side effects, is sometimes when people don't follow the food instructions and they then start to struggle to swallow. So please keep eating normally. I can't emphasise that enough. And with pain relief, will I get prescribed anything to help with the pain? So normally they will give you something for the first few days, but you can then take something like paracetamol. Sometimes when people are prescribed things like cocodamol, they can get constipated, so they don't like taking it. But you can, again, if you know that cocodamol has that effect on you, you can ask the anaesthetist and they will give you something to keep you your bowels moving. Um, or again, just make sure that you keep yourself well hydrated and start moving as soon as you can. And all of those things are really quite effective to stop you becoming constipated. Very, very occasionally people will have to go to the pharmacy and get some glycerin suppositories if they really are struggling and any sort of anti-constipation medicine is not working. If I am asthmatic, can I still take my inhalers? So what we normally advise with asthmatics is that the normal powder inhalers actually are quite, people find it quite difficult to take those because it's having had your hiatus hernia repaired and it's been sutured nice and tightly, people quite find it quite difficult to take that very big deep breath to inhale the powder. So we advise to try and swap to a different form of inhaler. What side effects may I experience with the reflux stop? Well, reflux stop is carried out with um, laparoscopically, so it's keyhole surgery once again. You'll have probably slightly bigger scars than you would have for another anti-reflux surgery because they have to put the device in and that's quite big, so you'll have a slightly bigger scar for that. So that can cause slightly more pain, but at the end of the procedure, all the port sites will have had some local anaesthetic in to sort of help with pain relief. One of the big things is you can, again, you can get referred pain, shoulder tip pain from the carbon dioxide that's used to inflate your abdomen. But over a period of about a week, hopefully that should be reabsorbed and dissipate. But a lot of people get shoulder tip pain. That's one of the things that they complain about the most. With the reflux stop, a lot of people also have said to us that they find it quite difficult to breathe very deeply. Um, and that, again, is probably down to the repair that has been done on your hiatus hernia and the hiatal defect that you may or may not have had. So the muscles of the crura are sutured together to make a nice repair and to support your lower esophageal sphincter. And as I say, some people then find, following that surgery, that they do find it quite difficult to breathe quite deeply. But hopefully, you won't have those problems. Can I still feel reflux symptoms post-operation and do, can I still continue my PPIs? So again, very occasionally um, people contact us to say why have I still got reflux symptoms following my anti-reflux surgery? And it's not what we class as proper reflux, it's where you have maybe um, not eaten slowly enough, you've taken too big a mouthful and the food hasn't quite gone into your stomach. So you get a small bit of food which either pulls or just sits just above your Lynx device. That then ferments, gives off vapours which can sort of act as a bit of like an aerosol and give these horrible reflux-like symptoms. But it is not reflux. So this 
happens to several, you know, quite a few people. So we advocate that you eat really slowly, chew your food, take small mouthfuls and wait in between each mouthful. It takes between sort of 30 seconds and a minute for that sort of peristaltic motion to move the food from your mouth down into your esophagus. So it's really important that you slow everything down, take your time in the, in the first few weeks of um, following your surgery to make sure that the food is going directly into your stomach. But that's, that is not reflux, it's just that horrible feeling that you feel after not eating properly. And with the dietary restrictions and modifications, are these similar to the LYNX procedure? So yes, once again, we advise that you would have, be given a plate of food before you leave the hospital, and again, that you eat normally. And it's a sort of similar principle that you just carry on eating normally, small, small um, plates of food, and small mouthfuls chewing very really well. We used to say have a sort of more um, liquid diet, but we've decided now that actually having a normal diet is more beneficial. And it, again, because you have this inflammatory response again around the small device, the reflux ball, and so we want to keep that nice and supple. So that is exercise by eating normally. With the reflux stop device, will I need to have an implant card to show at the airport? No, because it's because it's a silicon thing. You don't need anything to, to show because it shouldn't really show up on um, X-ray. And if it does, it's just a little. Uh, you, know, you can explain what it is, but no, it shouldn't set off any alarms. Now I'm going to ask some questions regarding the fundification. What side effects am I likely to get after a fundification? So, as with all keyhole surgery, laparoscopic surgeries, you can have referred shoulder tip pain from the absorption of CO2 that's used during the surgery to inflate your abdomen. But that should hopefully dissipate after a week or so. One of the big things that people complain about following fundification is that they have difficulty swallowing and occasionally also people can't vomit or burp. But this will all have been discussed and the percentage chances of that occurring with your consultant prior to your surgery. So it's really important that you discuss this really in detail with them before making any choices of what type of surgery to have. Are there any dietary restrictions or modifications post the fundification procedure? So with the fundification you'll be sent a detailed patient information leaflet and that will give you advice on pre and post stop um, dietary advice. There are some things that we probably advise you to restrict preoperatively and postoperatively you will be asked to start with a very liquid diet for the first 24 hours, moving on to sloppy and then gradually building up to a more normal diet over a, a week or two. <clears throat> and it's very important that you follow that advice because you'll probably have quite a lot of inflammation um, following your surgery and as I say people then really struggle to swallow sometimes if they try and eat a normal diet too quickly. So take your time, follow the dietary advice that you will be sent and um, you should do all right. When will I be followed up post anti-reflux surgery? So once you've had your anti-reflux surgery, Reflux UK will contact you immediately and offer you an appointment, probably three weeks and then probably another one at three months. You'll meet with your consultant, they will ask you how you're feeling, you'll discuss your diet, you'll discuss any dysphagia, you'll discuss any problems in this, at that appointment. And then going forward, you'll be followed up on a yearly basis where you'll complete health-related questionnaires so that we can ensure that what the services that we are offering are safe and effective.